What's going on everyone? So welcome to my latest video. This is part of a series where I focus on Academy Award Best Picture nominees from a certain year. Don't such years in the past, such as 2000 all the way to 2020. And you guessed it, because you clicked on this video, this time around I'm focusing on the 2021 Academy Award Best Picture nominees and ranking them from worst to best. And this is a really good year in terms of they finally, finally decided to say, you know what? We have the possibility of 10 Academy Award Best Picture nominees, and we're actually going to fill in all 10 whilst at the same time still using preferential voting. And the reason why I'm saying that this is exciting is because what happened was, for those of you who don't know, is that 1940s to 2008, it was always five Academy Award Best Picture nominees, like the possibility. And then 2009 onwards, it was the possibility of 10. But here's the thing. 2011 onwards until 2021, it was the type of situation where they used preferential voting and they were like, you know what, we're not going to give 10 best picture nominees. We're going to have it be either eight or nine. So 2021 onwards, they did decide that it is going to be 10 best picture nominees. And I'm very happy about that because what's the point of having 10 slots if you're not going to fill them? Like, what the heck? You know, there's a reason why critics at the end of the year do top 10 lists. But anyways, I'm not going to go on a rant. I'm very excited to be doing this list, and I'm going to be doing number 10 being the worst to number 1 being the best, and of course, my humble opinion, and I'll definitely be looking forward to hearing your guys' thoughts on your ranking down below in the comment section. But guys, enough exposition. Let's get started. So kicking things off, number 10, we have King Richard, a very standard issue movie that has a good Will Smith performance. Um... Yeah, not really much else to say about this movie. Uh, I, I know some people that really dig this movie. I, I really wasn't a big fan of this movie. I was quite surprised that it got a bunch of Oscar nominations. Um, best Actor, I saw the nomination. I don't think that Will Smith deserved the win. We'll get into that later on in this video, but I felt very lukewarm about this movie. And uh, yeah, it's a middle-of-the-road movie with a good performance, in my personal opinion. And yeah, that's why King Richard is my number 10. Next up, my number nine, speaking of middle of the road, we have um, number nine, which is Don't Look Up. A great cast, uh, sporadically funny, but also a swing for the fence, which is nice. But it's also a movie that feels way too long, like way too long. This 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 needed a lot of editing, um, truth be told. And then also it's a movie that at times the commentary that it's trying to get across in terms of the themes and messages works but then there are other times where it, it it's a big old swing and a miss in my personal opinion i think this movie's okay i don't hate it but i also don't love it the way some people do um it, it's one of adam mckay's lesser efforts in my personal opinion but i, I still enjoyed it but i think it's just a one-time watch for me and um yeah that's why it's my number nine next up my number eight is licorice pizza the latest paul thomas sanderson film it's a film that i wanted to love but unfortunately i think is just solid um, I did watch this twice, and even the second viewing, I felt the same exact way about it. It's got some good acting, the slice of life storytelling works at times, other times it's just kind of like, eh, whatever. Um, overall, I didn't get too, too much from this movie. Um, I do think that it's one of those movies where it's entertaining, but afterwards, there really wasn't much that I personally chewed on. I know there's a lot of controversy on social media about this movie, but uh, I'm not going to get into that. I just think that for me, it's just solid, which... For me, it's kind of a disappointment because Paul Thomas Anderson, I always think that he kind of unveils like near masterpieces or masterpieces. So just doing a solid film, it's kind of disappointing. But at the same time, it is still by any other director would have been, you know, considered like really good for him. It's solid work. Um, I can definitely respect it, but only to an extent. And uh, yeah, that is why it's my number eight. Next up, my number seven is West Side Story. This is a Steven Spielberg film. I'm a huge fan of his. And this is yet another entry similar to Licorice Pizza that I did watch twice. And both times I watched it, I felt very similar. It's a film that has great scenes. Kind of reminds me, honestly, of like A Star is Born from several years back where there are elements of greatness, like genuine greatness. Ariane DeBose does an incredible job. Holy cow, what a performance. What a performance. It's sporadically great, but then there are other elements that are just kind of like, eh, not that good. Great opening scene, great dance sequences, but then there's other scenes like the romance, the central romance is very like, eh, kind of um, half-baked, if you will. And just, I personally wasn't able to really get on board with it. It was really everyone around those characters that I was able to get on board with. But it's a film I respect. I can definitely see myself possibly revisiting this film because of those great moments, um, those great scenes I mentioned. But it's still a movie that I didn't love but I do respect to some extent, and Spielberg did a good job with this film, and yeah, that's why it's my number seven. 
Next up, my number six. This is the film that won Best Picture. And number six is Coda, a film that I did watch twice. I like it. I think Coda is a, a good film. It's a really good, feel-good kind of film. I don't think it should have won Best Picture, not even close. But I can definitely respect why a lot of people really dug this film. And I do think that what it's tackling in terms of, um, you know, the characters, we don't really see characters like this on screen. So the fact that they got depicted on screen was definitely a welcoming change. And I liked that. Um, can I see myself revisiting this film? I don't know. Maybe sometime down the line. But I don't know. Like, I, it winning Best Picture over some of the other entries, um, one in particular, I was kind of like, I don't know. Like, again... I respect this film, but it is one of the more forgettable Best Picture winners, in my personal opinion. But um, I still liked it. That's why it's my number six. Next up, my number five is Belfast. Uh, Belfast, I liked. I really liked the black and white cinematography. I liked the acting quite a bit. I think the humor works a lot. It's a slice of life film done well. Although I will say that the second viewing, I did like it a little bit less. But nonetheless, I do think that this is a good film. I would definitely say check it out. Um, it's short too. I think it's like 95 minutes. It's not long at all. It's definitely worth your time. And, um, yeah, that's why it's my number five. Next up, my number four is Drive My Car. This is a film for patient viewers. It is three hours long and it is very, 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 very slow burn. In terms of the pacing, it is very slow. Um, that's something that does work. Um, but then other times it is kind of detrimental to it. But at the same time, I will say that overall, this is a good film. And I think that with what it's tackling, is very intriguing. I like the performances. I like the chemistry between the two leads. There's a lot this film has to offer. I would definitely say check this film out. Rewatchability value, I don't know. Um, truthfully, when I saw this, I liked it. But I haven't really had the urge to revisit it. But I do like it better than some of these other entries that I've mentioned. And that's, that's honestly why it's my number four. Next up, my number three onwards. These are all the films that I actually own on physical media. And my number three is Nightmare Alley. Now, look, I know some people have this more on the bottom of the list because um, I know that this is a film that's just kind of happy to be on the Best Picture nominees list because, frankly, some people, including myself, weren't really expecting it to be a nomination. I think I might have expected it, like, a couple of days before it actually got announced. But it's still a surprise, nonetheless, like, overall, because it didn't do well at the box office. Um, but I will say that it is definitely a film that should be seen. Like, I saw this in theaters and I thought it was just all right. I did watch it quite late, though, but I couldn't get it out of my head. I couldn't get out of my head, like, the character arc. I just loved that arc. I'm like, I like that arc. I need to revisit it. And I saw it a second time. And that's when it clicked. Um, and then I decided to watch it a third time by buying it on 4K. And um, I love this film. I really like this film. Can't lie, I've been I, I've been wanting to revisit it already. Now I should probably watch the original soon, but I can't lie, I really really like this film, and um, that's why it is my number three. Next up, my number two, um, my number two, similar to my number three, is a film that I saw for the first time, and I thought it was just okay, but I just couldn't get out of my head and revisit it, and I've seen it three times now, and I love it each time more and more. My number two is Power of the Dog. Now, I'm going to be straight up with you guys. Um, part of me almost wanted to put The Power of the Dog as my number one because I can't get this film out of my head. I really can't. Despite having seen this film literally a couple months ago, like a rewatch, I already want to revisit this film. I can't get it out of my head. I can definitely see this film going up the ranks in terms of making this at, at the end of this decade, making it at the end of my list. Like, I really like this film. I absolutely adore the performances. And going back to what I mentioned about, um, you know, I said Will Smith with King Richard, I think Benedict Cumberbatch should have won Best Actor. For me personally, I think his performance was one of the best of the year and definitely the best lead actor, in my personal opinion. This is a beautiful film. It's very subtle, very emphasizing of visual storytelling. Johnny Greenwood's score is incredible. Every performance is outstanding. This is a film that... The pacing might not be for everyone, but I do think, similar to some of these others I mentioned, if you're on this film's wavelength, I think you'll get a lot out of it. I know I did. Um, I mean, for crying out loud, this is a film that went from like a 3 out of 5 to a 4.5 out of 5. Uh, there's a lot of lasting effect for this film for me, and that's why it's my number two. Next up, my number one. This is the film that I'm hoping part two is just as great, because as a part one, that was pretty amazing. Um, my number one is Dune. So this film cleaned up with the technical um, aspects of the Academy Awards in 2021. And rightfully so. This is a film that it, it puts to shame a lot of blockbusters that we've seen recently. And this is a film that is visually spectacular. 
outstanding world building, outstanding creativity in terms of the directing, the sound mixing. Hans Zimmer's score is outstanding. Love, 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 love this film. And I will say, I've seen this film three times now, and I will say that I've grown to really appreciate the ending. And I will say that even if we didn't get a part two, I still would have found this film to be satisfying because the way it ends, it is really good. And yeah, I, I love Dune. And that's why it's my number one. But yeah, guys, that is my uh, ranking for the 2021 um, Academy Award Best Picture nominees. My number one and two slots, can't lie, they're kind of like almost interchangeable at this point. But definitely curious to hear your guys' ranking of, you know, the 2021 Best Picture nominees. Let me know down below. And as always, guys, don't forget the subscription, notification bell, follow me down in the letterbox, and I will catch you guys later.